Hello and welcome to this Microtask Shorts video in which I'll be showing the IMXRT's X-Bar and AOI in operation. So the first question is probably what on earth is the X-Bar and what on earth is the AOI module? Well in the user's manual, here I'm taking the user, user's manual from the 1020 IMXRT device there's a fairly good diagram explaining essentially what it can do. Here we have various peripherals and also some pins. These are connected to the X-Bar module and at the output of the X-Bar module there are various other peripherals which are connected as outputs. The X-Bar itself is nothing more than a big multiplexer allowing the inputs to be connected to outputs. The IMXRT devices tend to have a second X-Bar module as well with its own dedicated inputs, some shared and some unique, which can then be connected to the AOI unit. Now the AOI unit allows programmable logic configurations of the inputs here to the outputs here, which means that rather than connecting just a single a peripheral input for example to trigger another peripheral output on the chip what we can do is we can take several of these inputs and we can perform logical functions on it before connecting it then to outputs so now that we know basically what this thing is and how the two of these modules work together the next big question is well what inputs and outputs are actually available and where do I find them well, the answer again is, is in the user's manual to the part. Here you will find in the X-Bar assignment section a list of all of the inputs to the X-Bar modules. So for example, the first X-Bar module can be connected at its input to the Q-timers, to flex PWMs, to PIT triggers and DMA triggers, for example. And looking at the X-Bar output assignment we also find a list so for example this x-bar output is connected to a certain pin uh, this one here is connected to the flex pwm module this one here is connected to a q timer and this one here can trigger the low power uart 4. now just before completing the introduction to the x-bar there is one speciality of the first four outputs these are connected to a small control module which can generate interrupts or DMA. Now only the first four outputs can do this, the other ones can't. So now that we know the basics of the X-Bar, let's build a small project to test some basic functions. So what I'd like to do is to take a pin input to this chip. Now I'm using the 1020 for this test and I want to connect its input to another pin output. That means that one pin output should follow the pin input. That's about the simplest case which I could think of. And now the other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to use the same input connected to this control module to generate DMA transfers each time an input changes. So what I'm going to do, no surprise, is take the Microtasker project and quickly build such a configuration. Now it just happens that in the port interrupts I have a port, a DMA port mirroring example which I've just activated and I'm also using the simulator to have a detailed look at it. So let's start the simulation. Now in fact the reason why I chose this as well is that it's very similar to a DMA triggered operation that Kinetis users already make use of. For this we have the interrupt setup where we can either program inputs to generate interrupts or as in this case we define it to do a DMA port trigger mode operation instead. So what I have here is a rising edge triggered DMA mode operation. We have no interrupt handler because DMAs don't use interrupts. And we choose to use the X-bar output number two 
for this operation. Remembering that the outputs 0 to 3 are capable. We choose to use pin 2, bit 4, because we know that this input can be configured as an X bar input. Now at the same time, I've added a small amount of code, which we're going to use to do the loopback as well. So explaining the code operation, because it's low level code, we apply the clocks to the X bar. We then configure X bar in out pin four as its peripheral function, ensuring that it's got an input operation and not the output operation. We then configure X bar in out five to its peripheral mode, but as an output function. And now we use this micro task and macro, which connects the input function to the output function. That is the multiplexer connection. Now we use some DMA configuration, which is going to be using DMA channel number five to be triggered by our X bar two output. And each time it's triggered, it's going to do a copy of this value in this register, which corresponds to port one bit 16 to the port toggle register. So effectively, each time this DMA triggers, I expect the port output to toggle. And so here we have the standard um, interrupt function call, which internally will be doing all of the dirty work for us to configure the DMA trigger on our input changes. So when the simulation runs, we can check that we've configured the operation as we want it to be. Now I know that this pin here is our in out pin, which we configured to be an input to the X bar module. And here is our X bar in out five peripheral, which we configured to be an output. So what I expect is that each time this input changes, the output will follow it because we have this connection. At the same time, I expect that each time we have a rising edge on this input, then we'll be toggling this output. So let's see whether the simulation can confirm to us that we've programmed it correctly. Now here we see that the inputs are following it or the output is following the input. And we see that each time we have a rising edge, we get a DMA transfer, which toggles this pin for us. Now what I've also done is I've loaded this project to the board and I've connected my logic analyzer to it. And on my X bar in four pin, I've got a square wave. And what we can see is that my out pin does in fact follow it. And then what I can also see is that every time we get a rising edge on our input, then we do get a toggle of our output pin. Now this is quite interesting because with this logic analyzer, we can also look at some timing details. First of all, we'll have a look at the delay between the input and the output. Now this is a direct connection via the MUX. Now here we see we have about four nanoseconds delay measured by my oscilloscope with a 500 megahertz sampling rate. We can compare that with the time that it takes for this input to generate a DMA trigger, which then changes the port output. Here we measure a time of around about 150 nanoseconds. So now that our first test was successful, let's move on to a slightly more complicated case. And also we're going to incorporate the AOI module. The AOI module, by the way, means and or invert module, as we're going to be seeing in a few minutes. Now this time we're going to change this configuration slightly to use also the X bar 2 module. And we're going to be putting some inputs into this X bar 2 module which we're going to be connecting to the AOI module. We're going to be for performing a logical operation on this to generate a new input to the X bar one. Now we're going to be connecting this new input to the output again, so that we've got a nice, simple measuring operation. We could, of course, also, or instead of, connect this output to the interrupt DMA trigger module to generate interrupts or to trigger other peripheral operations. In the meantime, I've slightly modified this low level code. Let me explain. 
First of all, I ensure that my X bar 1 is clocked. I then ensure that my X bar 1 input output 0 5 is configured and connected as an output. I then apply clocks to my X2 bar module. I connect a PIT trigger 0 to the first output, a PIT 1 trigger to the second output, a DMA done trigger to the third output, remembering that the channel 5 is the one which is triggering our port toggling. The fourth output I don't care about because we're not going to connect it anyway. Now I configure my AOI logic. I configure its channel 0, which is connected to these three inputs. And I configure it as follows. The first term here means that I have a four input NAND gate where I connect my A signal, which is the one from the first channel, directly. I hold the B, C and D inputs high so that they allow this signal to go through. The second four input NAND, I do the same with the B channel, that means the PIT1 trigger. Again, I hold the other inputs to 1 so that they allow this signal to come through. The third four input NAND, I connect to the C input. That means to the DMA five channel trigger. Again, the other inputs are connected to logic ones so that this signal goes through. The fourth four input NAND, I connect to all lows so that this always has a zero output and therefore doesn't affect the operation of the others. So the logical block in an AOI one channel is an OR function of these four four input NANDs. And the final thing that I do, I configure the output of this unit to be connected to my X bar five output, which we have connected to the pin here. After loading to the board and performing a measurement with the logic analyzer, this is the waveform that we now see. Again, we have our input square wave, and again, we have our DMA triggered output. The difference here is that I'm making it toggle on each edge rather than just on the rising edge. And in the middle here, we see the X bar 5 output. And now this is going a bit crazy. So let's go and have a look to see what's happened. Now, the first interesting thing is that we wanted to see the DMA5 output trigger. And here we see it. And if you remember, we awed this also with two pit timers. So in the project which I just loaded, I also set up two pit timers. The first pit timer is running with 500 microseconds timeout. So we can see its triggers at regular 500 microsecond periods. I set up the other one to have a 1.25 millisecond period. And here we see the triggers from the second pit timer. And therefore we see the interleaved pattern from the pit timer zero and the pit timer one. So that was it for today. So I hope that this introduction to the XBAR and AOI modules and also some examples of real operation prove useful and good luck using these in your own projects.